ट्रिप्सिन कैल्सिफाइड मल्टीवेसल पीसीआई बाय डॉक्टर सरिता राव सो प्लीज गो है Today I'm going to be talking about severe calcific lesions, rota ablation, and OBNNC economical trends. So, a fibrocalcific plaque they reduce the vessel distensibility and they impair a full uniform balloon dilatation and subsequent stent expansion. Coronary artery calcification is age and gender dependent and present in about 90% of men and 67% of women who are older than 70 years. and there have been various technologies developed in order to tackle this problem including the cutting balloon and the excima laser rotational laparotomy has long been considered an adequate choice for plaque preparation when dealing with highly calcific lesions or even after balloon failure however in larger vessels and in vessels that are not so tight these birds might not be able to ablate the plaque if at all they only modify the intimal calcification doesn't deal with circumferential calcification today So today in this I would try to elucidate the reason to use one over the other and what if any of it is not available as exemplified in my second case today so there has been a calcium scoring system developed on the angle the thickness and the length which which we are familiar and there is a basic algorithm to treat these calcific lesions depending on the assessment how heavy is the calcium and the various technologies to do calcium modification my first case 79 year old male female class 3 4 angina hypertensive angiogram revealed critical calcific double vessel disease rca proximal 90% severely calcific proximal led 90% eccentric calcified lesion a bypass surgery categorically denied by the patient my dilemma was what strategy should i use ivl or rota or an opn nc and which vessel first rca or led the rca was more calcific almost looked that it would be difficult to pass an opn or ivl balloon The LED seemed to be the easier of the two, so we decided to take up RCA first with the following options: open NC if the balloon crosses and finish with it if the lesion dilates; IVL if the open NC crosses but does not dilate; and rota ablation if nothing goes in. So these were the lesions: the LED discrete proximal calcific eccentric lesion and the RCA lesion just after the guiding catheter. A two into ten balloon failed to cross. So we took a 1.2 into 10 it crosses but the lesion remained undilated a 1.5 into 10 opn failed to cross the lesion so 1.5 bur was taken and multiple small pecking were done subsequent to rota ablation 2 into 10 crossed smoothly the stent passed with ease and expanded with a few undilated struts at the distal end now the approach for this under expanded strut in a calcified lesion should we use a non compliant balloon should we use an opn nc or an off label ivl which has been used with success we decided to take an opn nc when trading off efficacy with economy and you can see that we're placing there the undilated strut a 3 into 10 opn nc dilated the strut successfully and here you can see the final result led was stented in the same setting using 1.5 into 10 3 into 10 opn nc for pre and post dilatation respectively So the take home in this case was that always the toughest lesion should be dealt first try with the most effective and the economical hardware to upgrade if it fails drawback of ivl and opn nc is the crossability which is the advantage of rota with its extend and disadvantages as well so when embarking on a calcific lesions all the available armament theorem should be at hand as it is often difficult to assess the best modality unless you don't dive in the corneries and not having one or the other will leave you in the dolra second case nothing seems to be right here anomalous left main from the right coronary sinus having a calcified left main lesion and this had been attempted a month ago at another center and failed so this was just before the ivl was launched and back up was a real issue so we took a body balloon body wire and a 2 into 10 balloon at high pressure did not dilate the lesion so we went ahead with rota ablation and post rota 2.5 balloon crossed but the lesion did not yield even at 20 atmosphere the stent could go through however after dilatation it was dilated but there was dog boning suggestive of circumferential calcium an opn nc was negotiated and inflated and the stent was finally dilated at 38 atmospheres with the opn nc and this was the final result so in this case the learning points was that the body balloon helped in stabilizing the guide serial dilatation followed by rota helped us to deliver the stent an opn nc did the trick of final expansion using it inside the stent acted like a high pressure cutting balloon with which we could yield the circumferential calcium now 
I'll move to my last case that a string of pearls is sometimes what a woman needs. 68-year-old lady, diabetic, presented with worsening angina, TMT strongly positive. Angiogram done five years back revealed 100% RCA, CTO, well collateralized, and rest was normal. The TMT done at that time was negative. Now, on the basis of a strongly positive TMT, this time again, she was advised an angiogram. The RCA was similar, still 100% occluded with grade three heterocoronary collateral. Circumflex was normal, but the mid LED had developed a tubular calcific eccentric 80% stenosis. Now, the question was, what should we do next? She was given both the options of a bypass surgery and angioplasty to LED. She refused bypass surgery on the pretext that RC had no new lesion, so we decided to stint the LED only. Pros and cons of low ablation was also explained to the patient and family. The new lesion in LED needed to be tackled, and this must be the culprit for the patient's symptoms. Now, the rotavirus crossed. 1.5 bar, we took two passes of it. And subsequent to that, the stent crossed easily enough. 2.75 into 30 drug layering stent was deployed. And just after that, this is what we visualized. Now, is this a spasm, a dissection, or a near miss? So we tried to go ahead and stent the distal lesion after giving the usual cocktail of intracordinary NTG, nipper, and nitroprusside. It didn't improve, so we tried to stent the distal lesion 2.512. The stent was not going through, so it was post dilated. The bend with 10 into 2.5 OP and NC, post dilatation with 3 into 12. Tried to negotiate the stent using the guideliner, still failed to go. The stent, however, in this process got dislodged. So we took a 1.5 balloon and we tried to pull it out into the guiding after inflating the balloon across it. The stent, however, got dislodged. And in fact, it got partially implanted. Now, while doing it, during, during this procedure, the proximal LED also got dissected. You can see the dye tagging. So with serial upgrading the balloon, the dislodged stent was implanted in the mid part of the first stent. Post dilatation of the dislodged stent. After serial dilatation 2.5 and 3 OP and NC, we were finally able to deliver the distal stent and then implanted the fourth stent proximally 3 into 18 to cover the proximal dissection. And this was the final result. All the four poles were well dilated. So the take home from this case was that calcific lesion needs all the amamentarium at hand before taking a stent distal to a newly implanted stent. First, it's best to avoid doing it. But if you're stuck, no option, post dilate liberally. OPNMC is the only device approved for such situation at the moment as rota cannot be used in this situation and IVL is an off-label indication. Try to take mother and child guide as far as possible across the deployed stent. We were not able to negotiate the same because of the bad calcific stent. And once the stent is dislodged and partially deployed, as in our case, it's best to deploy at the same spot with serial upgrading the size of the balloon. All the four stents deployed as precious as pearls, finally to make the lady smile and for us to heave a sigh of relief in the cat lab. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you, madam. Uh, are you there or is Dr. Sarita Rao there? No. Oh, she's in there. Okay, excellent cases uh, of calcification and using OPN was more as a bailout for stent under expansion in the first two cases. So it gives us back uh, the old saying, that before you put a stent, see that there is adequate expansion of our uh, lesion preparation. And if there is a waste, residual waste, then uh, please use OPN balloon. And when you use OPN balloon for lesion preparation before the stand use 0.5 millimeter less so that uh, chances of perforation are less when you use it post stand for an under expanded you can use one is to one or 0.9 or 0.8 is to one i i still use it under 